Hello, my name is Sarah Dreibelbus. I am the whiskey buyer at Le Grand Triage on the Upper East Side. And today we are going to talk about something that we kind of are always talking about every time we talk about whiskey, uh, but we're gonna really dive in a little bit more today. And that is barrel aging. Um, almost all whiskey, unless it's moonshine, which is another story for another day, uh, but all whiskey spends some time in a barrel. Uh, barrels have some flavor compounds and some things that interact with the whiskey to soften it a little bit, mellow it out, add some color, add some flavor, a lot of the characteristics that um, kind of make whiskey as a category what it is and what we're familiar with. Uh, but today we're gonna talk specifically about kind of a different special type of barrel aging. So when whiskey comes off of the still, it starts off, it's colorless. Um, and so we're gonna stick it in a barrel to turn it into what we're used to as whiskey. Uh, most alcohols that are aged, so rum or sweet wines or red wines, all sorts of things go into barrels for this primary aging period. They just hang out for a little bit, pick up some barrel flavor, some oak flavor and mellow out. Um, once that's done with whiskey, uh, about 20, 30 years ago, some producers decided, let's just take it out of that first barrel Let's put it in a second set of barrels that have already been used for something else. Uh, it started uh, with scotch producers using X sherry barrels. So they would take their finished aged scotch that had spent some time in some mellow barrels, put it in these barrels that used to have sherry. Uh, and because the oak that we make a barrel out of is porous, whatever is aging in there is gonna be actually going into the wood of the barrel as it's aging. So that sherry that was in the barrel first, there's still a little bit of it actually in the wood of the barrel. When you introduce whiskey, it's gonna be able to also interact with that oak and actually pick up some traces of that sherry, which is pretty cool. Um, I'm very excited today because I actually have some special guests who are gonna be able to tell us a little bit more of uh, how that works and what it does to that whiskey. All right, so our first of two special guests today uh, is joining us all the way from the Highlands region of Scotland from a little distillery you may have heard of before called Dalmore. So let's welcome him in. Yes. Yes, well, I am the Dalmore 12. Uh, Sarah asked me here today to just tell you a little bit about myself and what makes me who I am. Uh, as she mentioned, I am from the Highlands region of Scotland, yes. Uh, I, I grew up as a child. I spent my first nine years in an ex-bourbon barrel, calm, just hanging out with my, my friends. Uh, after nine years there, though, I, I, I really felt like I was split in two, you know? Half of me was staying at home in that sweet ex-bourbon barrel, but the other half of me went to explore, and I... Half of me spent three years in an ex Oloroso sherry barrel. Oh, you know, Oloroso, so sweet. A little bit dark, a little bit rich, a lot of kind of walnut and dried fruit stuff happening there. So it was really fun to kind of hang out there, learn from the, the little bits left around. And and then I joined that other half of myself. And, and after, after a total of 12 years of aging, uh, you know, here I am. That was so interesting. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, uh, would it be okay if... <sighs> or what the hi. Thank you. It's uh, kind of weird. I don't... Uh, anyway, so as, as Mr. Delmore mentioned, uh, 12 years total age, three of those years, about half of it was spent in ex Oloroso sherry barrels. So um, it kind of has kind of a fun, warm glow to the color of it, almost that red tone. If you know sherry, it's this really deep red kind of golden reddish color definitely a lot of kind of fig uh plum dark red fruit notes and kind of a a musky like sweet tobacco on the nose mm. it's so rich and almost velvety it tastes really indulgent the the oak notes themselves are even a little bit sweeter and there's definitely kind of a almost like a light molasses um those those like dried fruits dried stone fruit um dark fruits a really lovely rich uh very kind of elegant feeling whiskey uh is it me am i it's my it's my turn i'm on hi okay uh hello 
I, my name is Breck. I am from uh, Colorado. I come from the Breckenridge Distillery. Uh, it is the world's highest distillery because Colorado has a lot of mountains. Uh, so, so what we do, uh, where I'm from, we make uh, some really, really dope high rye bourbon, uh, and then we put it, we do a lot of different casks, right? So, like, I got brothers who have spent time in, like, port casks, and, and so I personally, uh, I, I spent my first three years in, in an, a new charred American oak barrel, because I am a, I am bourbon, uh, but then I, I hung out in, like, a, like a, Pedro Jimenez XPX Sherry Barrel from Andalusia in Spain. So like, like Oloroso Sherry is like pretty rich, right? But then like PX Sherry is like rich to the max, you know? Like, uh, like richer, deeper, more intense flavors. So like, I got a little bit of that in me, but like, you know, at my core, I'm still just a bourbon. Thank you so much, Breck, um, and thank you for, for sharing a little bit extra of yourself with us today. Um, what do we got? Wow, it's interesting because the, the downmore definitely smells like scotch. Like you get that kind of malted, barley, grassy, earthy thing. This one smells like American whiskey, like more of that rye, spice, cinnamon, um, a little bit of apple, a little bit of cherry. Like it's very much kind of more of these like spice and oak notes kind of in your face. Uh, but there is something a little bit extra to it, like dried fruit or something. It's still, it's got like this, this balancing act going on because there is this bright, spicy, intense rye flavor is this like raw cinnamon and, and a little bit of almost black pepper. And then there's also this undertone of like earthy like moss and prune and molasses and these richer flavors and these two it's like a chord that's playing in this really cool harmony um what's what's awesome about these two both in x sherry casks um both you know a similar process but two very different types of whiskey that they're based on and so you get two very different flavor profiles um thank you so much for joining us today I just want to thank our two contributors again for coming to us all the way from uh, Scotland and Colorado. There are a lot of other whiskeys around the world that spend time in some really fun uh, casks to kind of do that secondary aging. There are Australian whiskeys and Irish whiskeys and more American whiskeys in all sorts of casks from like X Napa Cab to X Rum Barrels. So a lot to explore within just this little category. Uh, next week we will be coming at you again with more wines, more whiskeys. In the meantime, have an awesome weekend and want to take it out, boys? Yes. Stay home. Stay safe. Stay awesome.